I am Lei Tzu. You may know me as the legendary Chinese empress who discovered silk. One day I was drinking tea, and a cocoon fell into my tea. I stretched and pulled at the cocoon until I covered my entire garden. I convinced the emperor and the citizens to grow mulberry trees and domesticate silkworms. I invented the silk reel and the silk loom. I am Lei Tzu, legendary Chinese empress of silk. a famous author, general, and philosopher. I was born in 544 BC, and when I was 30, the king of Wu noticed my leadership skills and recruited me as one of his generals. I was honored to have the position. To test me, though, he gave me 180 of his concubines as an army. I made two of them generals and told them to carry out an order, but they just laughed and giggled like it was no big deal. To show my duty and my requirement of obedience to the king, I had them both killed right on the spot. When I gave the two new generals the same order, they executed it flawlessly. Throughout my life, I won many battles for the kingdom of Wu, and it became ex and, it, and Wu became extremely powerful. Today, the thing I am most widely known for is for writing the book, The Art of War. The art of war is a philosophy about managing conflicts and winning battles. This book isn't only for war, though. Many coaches, world leaders, political leaders, and businesses have incorporated the art of war into their style. I am Sun Tzu, famous author, general, and <coughs> philosopher. official. I am most known for my philosophy known as Confucianism, which involves respect between people and society. This, this works so well that legend has it when I incorporated this in my home state, crime disappeared. My work would gain me renown and I would become the minister of justice in my home state. I would eventually quit out of shame though. I am Confucius, famous <coughs> author, philosopher, and Chinese official. I am Emperor Qin Zhi Huang, the first emperor of China. However, in order to attain the throne, I first went by contracting my personal army, and since I had close ties with inf very influential nobles, I went and I secured the throne. However, if you take a step back in history, you'll see that two years into the battle, diplomats from Yan decided to have peace with me. So they went and sent me two gifts, the head of a traitor general that fled to Yan, and also a map of the Yan province. However, as the diplomats finished unraveling the map, a knife was concealed inside. However, I managed to avoid the assassination attempt. I was naturally furious. I decided that I wanted the army to attack Yan and destroy it. Ten years later, all six rebellious states in China were now under my control. My dream had come true. Now, as emperor, I decided to unify China by changing the law and language and measurements to the same. Also. I decided to build the Great Wall to defend against Mongolian invaders. Then I had scholars build me a potion that would enable me to become immortal. However, they failed and the byproduct was gunpowder. Then, <laughs> then I decided to build a terracotta army to guard me in the afterlife. But that failed too. <laughs> I am Emperor Qin Zhi Huang, the first emperor of China. but many people disagree with this. I am Wu Zetian, the first and only female emperor in Chinese history. I was born in 624 to rich family. My father encouraged me to read, write, and develop intellectual skills. I learned to play music, write poetry, and speak well. I was very beautiful and talented, and so I was selected to be one of the emperor's concubines. I impressed him and attracted men, including future husband and emperor, Prince Li Jie. After the emperor died, Prince Lijia became Emperor Gaozong. And after I married Gaozong, I became Empress of China. In 674, I took the title of Tian Ho, while my husband became Tian Huang. Nine years later, however, he died. I placed my first son on the throne, and he took the royal title of Zhongzong. He refused to cooperate, 
and his wife assumed too much power, and so I banished both of them. I then replaced him with my second son, but uh, I thought he was a disappointment. <laughs> and so I forced him to give up power and proclaimed myself Emperor Zetian. I changed the dynasty from the Tang to the Zhou dynasty, created new characters, and set the official religion to Buddhism. I also organized a secret police force so that I could get early warnings of any plots and take care of any threats before they became actual problems. I also managed to reopen the Silk Road after its closure. I believed I was equal to men, and so I became the first woman emperor in Chinese history. I died in 705 when I was 81 years old. I am Wu Zetian, the first and only female emperor in Chinese history. <laughs> and I was also known as Xuan Zhongxian. I was considered the founding father of the Republic of China. I was also one of the main leaders who ended the Qing Dynasty. I was born in Guangzhou in the Guangdong province in 1866. There, I was born to a family of farmers. <laughs> At the age of 13, I was sent to Hawaii to get an education. Later, I returned to China and eventually graduated and certified as a medical doctor. I became more and more involved with politics when I felt that the Qing Dynasty rule was unfair and foreign countries were taking advantage of the weak Qing Dynasty. When the Qing Dynasty ended in 1911, I was elected as the first president of China. Sadly, I died on March 12, 1925. <laughs> but my philosophy had a major impact on Chinese politics and society later on. I am Sun Yat-sen, the first president of China.